Now, before I go any further with the surface of this water, I want to decide where the horizon is going to be. So this is not like an ordinary landscape where I have a horizon between the sky and the ground, but this is going to be a horizon that is somewhere in between the top of the water or the bottom of the air and the seafloor. So somewhere in between here and here. So I might consider where I want people to be looking at this from. If this is going to be hanging up high, then I might want the horizon closer to eye level for the viewer. So I might make it lower so that it actually appears that you are looking up at that surface. It won't look as natural if I'm viewing it from right here and the horizon is down here because I'm turning my head down to look at something that would be up if it's above the horizon. So let's say that there's a bright spot right here. And if they're crisscrossing waves, a lot of times the resulting pattern is somewhat of a diamond shape. So let's make this kind of a diamond shape right here. I don't even care about all the brush strokes under it. Let's just say that this is the bright spot of some wave. Now, I'm going to go smaller and flatter as I get down. Like this. Smaller, flatter, smaller, flatter, smaller, flatter. See how it just becomes a stroke down here? Right here, I'm just going to go like that. This is going to create a lot better perspective for me following patterns like that. So after I put it down, I'm trying to target the top edge of these strokes to feather them. I can just get rid of the extra paint like that because I'm going to paint over all of that. Now watch, I can, I can do things to blend this more. Like a fast brush stroke right over the top of it. Now for the most part, not everywhere, but for the most part, I can cut this in and have that sharp edge where this bright green's coming up and meeting the bottom edge of these blue strokes. And most of my blending, I want to be the blue blending up into the green rather than the bright green blending up into the blue. It would go both ways, you know, but in a on the top of bigger waves, they tend to spike more on the tops, and that's why you get that effect. You know, because the lower areas are more rounded and the points are at the high spots. Nice thing about a technique like this, is I can just go back and forth and back and forth. I mean, I guess you could do that with the other one too. I end up doing that all the time. You know, I'll go too far on one color, so then I come back and fix it with the other. Then I go too far with that color. If I don't like how a spot looks, just do it again. Now when I get this low in the picture, I want a lot less of this bright green. Start using a lot more of this dark color. And also, you know, I don't have to put the light green on first. I could put the dark on first and then blend the light into it. Whatever. I mean, you can do it any way you want to, as long as you just have that same same system to it, it's going to look like the surface in perspective, you know. Okay, now I'm really starting to like the way this looks better than what it was. Because now I have all these diagonal lines up in here and they're getting straighter and more horizontal down here and that, that definitely is creating a much better perspective. Also, I think this is cool having these darker areas like this one here because it, it'll, it'll start looking like a bigger wave made out of tiny waves and that really helps it to look more like natural moving water to me and it's starting to have this general curve to it around the lit area where the sun's coming through also and that creates more of a central viewpoint so that it, it looks like you're looking at this from from a real perspective rather than just being straight across so that it's the same no matter where you're standing that curve also adds an amount of perspective so that it looks like you're turning your head and looking different three-dimensional directions.
this is where I've laid all the groundwork and I have my waves in place. Now it's time to put a pretty little bow on it and do these highlights at the tops of the waves. So now I'm doing the same thing as the last technique where I had these two colors, but now I'm gonna to switch to these two colors and I have a brighter yellow or green, barely green at all, mostly uh, white and a little bit of yellow. That's gonna be the very brightest parts of my water. Just kind of feeling this out as I go, how much of this color to put on here. I'm gonna fill in a little bit more of this. See, I can just blend it by smearing it. I don't even need that other color sometimes. But I like the color that they make when they mix together also, so I will use it. I'm gonna stay with that same pattern of keeping this in a shape that's kind of rounded, going, going with my sunset scene that I have here. I'm gradually washing this thing out with this color, making more and more of it. Sometimes I just have to see it to decide. After I do all of this bright color on these waves, then I'll come back and then inside of that color, just like I did this yellower shade inside of the bright green, and I, I didn't overlap it onto any of the dark blue. Well, I'll do the same thing with the pure white next. And then just in this brightest area, I'll just completely wash out the color with bright white. It'll go from first this yellower color, then to the white. Some more of that bright white. You can see me just, just like a paint by number now, I'm just making white inside of the areas that I've already created. So there's a lot of different ways to smear this on to make these light rays, but the important thing is whatever you do, do it quickly. Because I'll show you, if I go over this now that it's had a second to dry, it's just gonna leave these hard little edges. See, just that thin layer on there made everything just a little bit greener. All right, let's go to the next lesson.